Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome to Phoenix Point, Backer Build 5. We've come a long way since the original prototype in 2017, but here we are with what may very well be the last backer build before the game's full release in December. Now, they've actually added a lot of new content since backer build 4, so we've got a lot of ground to cover. Rather than beating around the bush, I think we'll just dive right in. They've actually implemented a placeholder tutorial, so we'll let them explain how everything works. Oh, but before we do, I should remind you, this is just an alpha. Things have come a long way over the past couple of years, but the game's still not content complete. And on top of that, this is actually an early press release, so it's even less polished than Backer Build 5. While it will give us a much better idea of where the development is headed, just remember, this isn't a finished product. That said, let's get started. First up, we've actually got difficulty options now. But since the game is still in active development, we'll just stick with standard for now. And we'll keep the tutorial enabled for obvious reasons. A world in chaos. The old world is no more. The Arctic permafrost has melted, unleashing a deadly virus, claiming billions of lives and causing billions more to mutate into mindless aberrations. The remaining survivors have gathered together in havens throughout the world, hoping the infection won't reach them there. We are the Phoenix Project, all that is left of an organization dedicated to ensuring humanity's survival. It is time to rise from the ashes. Okay. The Geoscape. The Geoscape represents the current world and all known locations. You can access it at any time by clicking on the Geoscape tab. The Manticore. The Manticore is your transport aircraft. The crew of the Manticore is displayed in the aircraft panel below. Oh, it is worth mentioning that unless things have changed, the Manticore is actually just one of several air vehicles you'll be able to gain access to. Navigation. To move, left-click on a location on the globe, then select the move action. The orange circle shows your maximum movement range. Hmm. Looks like we're starting in South America again. I can certainly live with that. I do find it rather interesting that they haven't really brought back the fuel depot system from Backer Build 3. Instead, you still refuel after every stop. It's not as realistic, but it does stress the importance of exploration and discovery. Every new location you find is basically a jump-off point for further exploration. Not that we have much choice right now. Resources and Exploration Exploration sites, with a question mark, may contain valuable resources, or another Phoenix base. Left-click on an exploration site and select Explore. Exploration takes time, and you may get ambushed. They're not kidding about that last part. There are indeed ambushes, and they can get pretty brutal. In fact, if you're going to lose any soldiers in Backer Build 5, it's probably going to be because you got ambushed. Scavenging Site. Eliminate all enemies to claim the resource crates. Well, that's about as basic as it gets, so uh, not much to say here. We'll jump right in, plow through the fight, and see what's next.
Okay, and here we are on our very first night mission. As you can see, things are a lot creepier and more claustrophobic since the last time we played. Aside from that, things haven't changed too much. We basically just need to protect those resource crates until all the attacking aliens are dead. Of course, that is easier said than done. Following the trend, we start with even less toys this time than we did back in Backer Build 4. We've got one heavy, one sniper, and three assaults, and some pretty bare-bones equipment to uh, help get them by. Let's see what we can do with it. Of course, you'll also notice they've gotten a lot more aggressive with the perception ranges and fog of war. We'll need to be careful here. Let's go! Oh, and as you may have noticed, they've also added soldier barks. It's just a placeholder for now, recorded by two of their in-house staff, but they are in the process of uh, recording professional voice acting right now. Let's go. Running. Okay. They don't know we're here yet, so they're staying focused on those crates. We'll need to get over there quick if we want anything to be left. Awaiting instructions. Our heavy's got some pretty solid armor, so let's have her jetpack over there. Ah, there we go. All right, we've got a crab man. No surprise there. Relocating. Dashing. Oh, that is a Triton. That's one of the new enemies. And there goes that crate of materials, but not much we could do about that. Oh. 
Okay. Lighting's pretty poor, but... Let's see if we can get a better look at this guy. And try to save that crate in the process. Moving. Now this will damage the crate, but it won't destroy it. Let's hope it gets their attention. Nice. Starting strong, right out the gate. Though I was hoping to get our heavy back under cover. We'll have to hope that armor holds up. Hmm. Not bad. Moving. All right, let's see how this plays out. <laughs> okay. That's less impressive. Ah, the Triton's on the defensive. Oh, hi there. Well, that certainly could have gone better, but the important thing is, we got them off that container. Engaging. Oh, hold on. We've got a mind fragger in play. Those things are way too dangerous to ignore, so... Let's see if we can take that thing out first. Okay, back to it. Aiming. Now, we've got at least one crab man and one triton hiding in this cloud of mist. We can't see them, but they can see us. We'll need to handle this very carefully. Okay, and that gives us a pretty good idea of where he's standing. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Hmm. 
well, we hit something. Just not what we were hoping to hit. Instructions received. Let's go. You slippery bastard. All right, we've actually got a ping this time, so we've got a much better chance of hitting him. Let's take another shot. Oh, I think we got both of them. <laughs> yeah, it's over. I mean, obviously, the Heavy did end up hogging most of the kills for herself, but... All things considered, that could have gone a whole lot worse. Let's get back to the Geoscape. Three hundred and fifty materials and fifty food. Not too shabby. It says we didn't get any items, but we did. Oh, and it's also important to note that food does have a use now. There's actually a daily upkeep based on your total number of recruits. Though, it is also worth noting that, despite what some of the earlier promo material showed, it doesn't look like we actually have to recruit non-combat personnel. Mission Rewards and Items on completing a mission, all gathered items and resources are added to your overall supplies. You can re-equip the members of your squad with new weapons you have gathered at any time by left-clicking on the Personnel tab. You can also access squad members by clicking the Crew icons in the Manticore panel. Again, that is actually not working as intended in the current press build. We are picking up items, it's just not displaying them during our post-mission debriefings. Hopefully they'll get that fixed soon. Alright, let's check out our squad. Now, as we saw during our first mission, we've got a pretty basic five-man squad. One heavy, one sniper, and three assaults. That actually marks a pretty drastic shift in the game's dynamic. Assault soldiers are much more common than they were before. Likewise, with the exception of the Berserkers, the Elite classes are much more difficult to obtain. Training and Leveling Soldiers can increase stats or acquire new abilities by spending skill points. Only abilities of the soldier's level or lower can be acquired. Soldiers gain the ability to acquire a second class at level 4. Doing so provides them access to all skills and abilities of the new class. Notice that it says access to. You still have to unlock them with skill points. It's also worth noting that they've drastically increased how high you can take your attributes, while also removing the attribute requirements on abilities. It makes the choice between investing in attributes or abilities a much more significant decision. Now, I would actually like to rename our soldiers. They haven't put in most of the customization options yet, but you can still change your soldiers' names. Let's take care of those level ups, and then I'll check my waiting list. 
The first thing I should mention here is that they have drastically overhauled all of the class ability trays. There are some familiar abilities there, but for the most part, they've toned everything down. There's less overall focus on free actions, and more focus on utility abilities and passive abilities. That's not to say that some abilities aren't clearly superior to others, and the Assault class is probably still the best one to dual class with, but overall, I'd say your soldiers are a lot less superhuman than they were in Backer Build 4. As far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. As for our heavy, I'm not a big fan of Body Slam, so I think we'll just skip that one. I will pick up Warcry, though. I don't use it very often, but it is a potentially useful ability. As for the rest of the points, we'll dump most of those into attributes, uh, mostly speed. But we will keep a few in reserve. We'll need those if we decide to dual class. Anyway, let's hit the pause button real quick while I grab my waiting list, and we'll be right back. And we're back. We've got five lucky recruits ready to help found our new Phoenix project, and ready to serve as our first few casualties. Let's get back to it. Equipment and Inventory You can equip your soldiers with new weapons and armor by dragging available equipment from the stores onto the appropriate slots in their inventory section. Items in the Ready section are available for instant use at the start of a mission. Mount items can only be attached to the corresponding piece of armor. Now, functionally speaking, this actually works very similarly to how it worked in Backer Build 4, but visually, it's obviously gotten a pretty solid upgrade. We've got convenient tabs for sorting, we've got convenient tabs for ammo production. The only downside is that it is a little twitchy in the current press build, but I'm sure they'll end up improving that once they start rolling out the first few bug fixes. There are actually a lot of new items to play with in Backer Build 5, but... Unlike Backer Build 4, where we got a nice cross-section of items to play with, we'll have to go out and earn them the hard way this time around. I'm pretty happy with our starting loadout, so let's get back to it. Alright, looks like we have to go explore that other POI. Another scavenging site. Makes sense. We'll need plenty of resources to get ourselves started. Let's do this. And that brings us to the deployment screen, which is where we can select exactly which soldiers are going on a mission and make final adjustments to their training and equipment loadouts. Obviously, we just looked at all this stuff, so we really don't need to do any fine tuning here. Okay, let's see what we're up against here. Well, right off the bat, we can see a crab man behind that crate there. Hmm, we've got a mist sentinel too. That thing's not much of a threat during the day.
Ooh, let's get Mark up on this tower here. It's the middle of the day, so he should have a pretty good line of sight. I'm here. This building's a pretty big blind spot, so we'll have to be particularly careful with that. Target confirmation. Ah, those things have spitter heads, so they do have a range attack. Oh, well, he did have a range attack anyway. Nice job, Carlos. Let's keep that building covered. In fact, let's keep both sides covered here, just in case. Okay, so we've got two wounded crab men, but that's almost certainly a triton hiding in the building over there. Let's start picking them off. Shake it, baby. Hey, a shotgun clip. Neat. Open fire. I don't miss. All right, let's bring up the assaults. Waste of ammo. Well, shoot. I was hoping he'd take a little yes. damage. Well, he'll drop his shield once he starts moving, so... Let's set up some overwatch. Let's go! We need to be careful about that sniper. We don't want him taking pot shots at us. Very nice. I think that was Fox who got that second kill. Alright, let's start advancing on that Triton. 
Already there. Got you covered. Now this building is definitely trickier. There's no telling what might be hiding inside. I'm here. We've got incoming. <laughs> Bunny is ridiculous with that cannon. Nicely done, Mark. As you can see, these Tritons are significantly different than the first one we fought. I'm not even sure what half those mutations do. Let's get a better look at this guy. What's inside? Hmm. Still alive. Silent Echo. I think that puts out a false ping when you can't see him. Paralyzing arms. And a regenerating torso. Interesting. Well, let's take this guy down. Oh. <laughs> Inconvenient. Obviously, the line-of-sight system could use a little fine-tuning. Come on, what the hell? Failed to connect there. Hmm. There we go. Nice shot, Carlos. What's the plan? That was a warning shot. I'm here. Got it. All right, let's see what he does. Yeah, he's trying to use that cover to his advantage. On my way. Taking point. Oh, 
nice. Easy enough. Valen actually has a clear line of sight on him. <laughs> or maybe not. Oh shoot, that might actually give him cover. There we go. And that just leaves the Mist Sentinel. Let's tear it down. Sure thing. And we are done. Well, we lost one crate, but otherwise that was a pretty smooth mission. Nice work, team. Rewards are a bit more modest this time, but that's fine. We'll take what we can get. And once again, we did recover loot. It's just not showing it. At the very least, we should have that shotgun ammo. Fatigue and injuries. After every battle, soldiers lose stamina. When the stamina level reaches 20% or less, the soldier will suffer an action point penalty in the next battle. In order to rest, and also heal injuries, you need to send your soldier back to your base and leave them there. It takes time to rest or heal. Obviously, this mechanic is intended to discourage the player from relying on just one team at a time. Instead, they should have at least two or three teams. That way, they can have one team resting and recovering, while the other teams are off doing other things. That becomes even more important once the player has a foothold in multiple continents. Otherwise, they won't be able to respond in time if something happens on the other side of the globe. Anyway, looks like it's time to head back to base. The base. Your base contains facilities essential for the success of the Phoenix Project. You can access your base by selecting the Base Info option on the respective base settlement on the globe, or by left-clicking on the Bases tab. Now, it is worth mentioning that you can have multiple bases, you just can't build them yourself. A big part of the story actually revolves around tracking down and reactivating those lost Phoenix Project bases. Base Facilities and Facility Repair Damaged facilities are indicated by red panels. You can repair a damaged facility by clicking on it, as long as you have the required resources. Make sure Geoscape time is running for the repair process to proceed. And here we've got our rather awkward starting base. The uh, layout is randomly generated, and uh, I guess we can work with this. We've got an assortment of basic facilities, including our research labs, which need to be repaired. So let's get started on that. And now we wait. Time options. Time is required for soldiers to heal and facilities to be built. Time only passes while in the Geoscape view. Research. Your research lab has been repaired. Go to the Research tab and select a project to research. 
then return to the geoscape and start the time running. Research Projects Hovering over a project displays the relative research information and requirements. You can start researching projects by left-clicking on the arrow button of the chosen research. You can stop any currently ongoing project from the research queue. All research progress will be kept upon stopping. Well, we've only got one project to choose from, so I guess we'll go with that one. Of course, as we complete research projects, we will unlock additional projects to research. While the current campaign actually does have a surprising number of research projects to complete, it's only a taste of what the developers have in store for the final game. You'll also notice there are three tabs at the top of the research page, indicating the research trees for the three NPC factions, but it's actually surprisingly hard to get any actual research from them. In the current build, you can steal some of it, but otherwise, it requires a full-blown alliance before they'll give you anything. We'll revisit that in a future episode. For now, let's see what we've got here. Phoenix Project We have discovered a batch of encrypted files on the mainframe of the newly reclaimed Phoenix base. According to the file names, these are the Phoenix Archives, or what remains of them. Well, let's get started. Phoenix Project. We located a brief message in the base logs. If you find this, then you are almost certainly all that remains of the Phoenix Project. You still have access to our tech. This base has the most advanced AIs we ever built. They will direct your research and fabrication. However, there are still other bases out there. It is imperative that you find them. They have invaluable data on the Pandoran threat. I am sorry I cannot be of more help. There's no more time. I have to go. Dr. Randolph Symes III, Phoenix Project Commander. New Research. Oneric Delirium Index and atmospheric analysis. Interesting. Restoring humanity. Now that you know your initial goal, build a satellite uplink to start exploring the world for surviving pockets of humanity and functional Phoenix bases. It's also advised to build a fabrication plant so you can manufacture more and more powerful weapons and equipment. To build a facility, left-click on an empty base slot and select a facility from the list. Alright, I think we're almost at a pretty good stopping point here, but let's at least get our base set up first. Let's put the fabrication plant next to the research lab, uh, research and development. And I guess we'll tuck the satellite relay out of the way. Uh, let's say down in the corner next to the storage bay here. Yeah, I think that's good. We've got a new research project, so let's get started on that, too. Atmospheric analysis. We have managed to connect to some of the remaining weather satellites. We should use these to assess the extent of the new mist outbreak. Bonus effects. Global mist monitoring system. Interesting. Well, at this point, there's nothing to do but wait. But we've already been playing for about an hour now. Let's, uh, let's take care of those level-ups we just got, and then we'll hit the pause button for now. First up, we've got Mark Richards, who will obviously be getting extreme focus. You already saw how valuable Overwatch can be, so being able to do it cheaper is pretty much a no-brainer. Then we'll 
also boost his speed. In fact, we'll boost everyone's speed. Personally, I think that's the most important of the three primary attributes. Next we've got Fox, who... Honestly, looks like he might be better off left as a single-class assault trooper. Yeah, all of his randomized perks are pretty much built for assault. Well, for now, we'll go ahead and grab Dash, which, while toned down from what it was back in Build 4, is still a pretty fantastic perk for any class. In fact, I'd go so far as to argue that it's practically mandatory for some classes, especially the Berserker. Then we've got Carlos, who will also be getting the Dash perk. Though, in his case, his randomized perks actually lean him more towards an assault-heavy hybrid. That accuracy boost would make him a pretty good fit for a heavy cannon. He also has the option of silenced weapon proficiency, which is interesting because, as far as I can tell, they don't actually have silenced weapons implemented just yet. The stealth system is still a pretty big mystery at the moment. It's one of the few major mechanics that's not even present as a placeholder in Backer Build 5. I guess we'll just ignore it for now. At any rate, I think we've made some pretty good progress, so... Like I said, I think we're at a pretty good stopping point. We'll hit the pause button for now, but we'll pick up here next time as we continue the tutorial, explore the world around us, and... Uh, get to know the neighbors. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Phoenix Point, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Discord server, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, the development roadmap, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Fig. You can also get your hands on a copy of Backer Build 5 for yourself by pre-ordering the game over on the official Snapshot Games web store. As always, links are in the description.